Hey everyone, I hope that you guys are doing well. Welcome to another video. In today's video, I'm gonna to talk to you about how I choose a camera and a lens to take with me on an outing, as well as how I choose a camera and a lens for purchase. Today's video is a uh, direct response to a comment that I got on a previous episode that I posted where I was sharing my black and white JPEG workflow. I think because I shared different images from different cameras, uh, someone asked me or commented and said that it would be interesting if I shared how I choose a camera to take with me and how I choose a camera to leave behind. They were specifically talking about the X-E4 and the X-F10 and what about the X-F10 would I miss if I took the X-E4. And so I figured that I would respond to that and I'm also gonna take it a step further and talk about how I purchase a camera or a lens because it's pretty much the same process. It's a four step process, it's very simple. Step one and step four, in my opinion, are the most important. Step two and step three are luxuries and they only come after you've been shooting for quite some time. Another thing to note is that if you were gonna consider uh, using these four steps and applying them to your decision-making process, they're only gonna work if you're shooting on a regular and consistent basis, because then you'll gain experience and these will make a little bit more sense. All four of these steps typically I use in conjunction, so you'll see what I mean. But with all of that being said, let's jump into step number one. So step number one for me is to be grateful for the things that I have versus being hung up on the things that I don't have. And what that looks like is it comes down to a basic question in everyday life. And that is, what do I have access to? In other words, I shoot with whatever I have. So right now I have multiple cameras, but there was a time in my life where I couldn't afford anything. So all I had was my iPhone. And so I shot with my iPhone for years, not having a quote unquote real camera was not an excuse for me not to explore photography. And so I shot regularly and consistently. That really, really pushed me forward in my photography. And so that is how I use this step from the perspective of going out on an outing. From the perspective of uh, purchasing something, when I first started and I was ready to start investing in cameras, the only thing that I could afford at that time were film cameras and film lenses. Now today in 2023, 2024, um, film cameras and film prices have skyrocketed, but at that time they were dirt cheap. People were getting rid of them, giving them away. They were considered obsolete technology. So I ended up buying these cameras for like 20 to $25, $30. I got uh, the Nikon uh, F65 for $10 off a guy on Craigslist. And then I would borrow Nikon lenses from my friends and I would uh, shoot with that for a while. And so for a long time, I shot with film. I think the most expensive film camera that I ever got was the Mamiya RZ67. And that really was not in the same phase. I actually bought that later on and I paid 250 for that. And so anyways, to this day, step number one is always uh, asking myself, what do I have access to? Or how much money do I have access to? if I'm talking about this from the perspective of purchasing. Step number two is the right tool for the right job. Um, and I could go on for an entire video on what the right tool for the right job is, but let me just keep it simple and say that when the only thing that I had was an iPhone, my iPhone was always the right tool for whatever I was doing. And so I think that's really, really important to clarify. There are tools that are quote unquote ideal for the kind of look that we're looking for. But whenever I'm going to go out on an outing, another question that I ask myself is what kind of photography am I going to be doing? And then I ask myself, what do I have access to? And then within what I have access to, I take the closest thing to the right tool as possible. So uh, for example, if I'm going to go out and I'm going to shoot portraits in in the past, I shot a lot with long focal lengths like the 85 and the uh, 100 millimeter focal length. These days, or at least for the last five years, I've been primarily just shooting with a 50 millimeter focal length. And so if I know that I'm going to shoot portraits, I'm going to look through my shelf and I'm going to grab uh, something with a 50 millimeter focal length. That being said, there are times where I'm traveling and maybe I didn't take a 50 millimeter lens with me. All I have is an X100, something with a 35 millimeter focal length. And I've done plenty of portrait shoots with a 35 millimeter focal length. There's even been times where I've had to do portraits with a 28 millimeter uh, focal length because that's all I had available with me at the time. So the right tool or as closest to the right tool as possible helps me determine what I'm gonna take with me. From the perspective of purchasing, 
uh, going back to when I first started, I asked myself, how much money do I have? I had like $550 at the time. And what kind of photography am I gonna be doing? At that time, once again, I was shooting just portraits. And so the A6000 was on sale at Best Buy for like $500, just the camera body. I couldn't afford to buy the lenses. So I adapted the film lenses that I had purchased in previous years going through that first stage. And it was definitely the right tool for the right job. For a really long time, that's all I did is I shot manual focus lenses. That is how I use step number one and step number two, just to help me narrow stuff down to go out on an outing as well as uh, when I want to purchase something. Step number three is user experience, and this is absolutely a luxury. When I first started, I couldn't focus on user experience. One, I just didn't have enough experience shooting to really know the difference. But when I was first starting out, my priority was my results or my results getting better. Once my results got to a certain point, once I had shot with different cameras, then I started to realize that different cameras would make me feel different. I don't like the paparazzi user experience, and that's what I call it when you have a really big lens and a big DSLR with a big grip. I don't like that uh, feeling. These days, I tend uh, to gravitate towards what I call the documentarian user experience, and that is when I have a small uh, camera with either no grip or a very tiny grip and a small compact lens with a viewfinder. And I also love the point and shoot uh, user experience. Once again, these are luxuries. So whenever I'm gonna go out on an outing, I ask myself, what do I have access to? Two, what kind of photography am I gonna be doing? And three, how am I feeling or how do I wanna feel? For example, if I'm gonna go out with friends and I wanna feel like a documentarian, I'm gonna take a camera like the X-E3 or uh, the X-E4 or the X100 series with me and I will shoot behind the scenes type stuff. If instead I don't wanna feel like a photographer, instead I wanna feel like I'm a tourist, but I know that there's gonna be something that's gonna happen that I wanna capture and I do wanna feel like a photographer for all but like 30 seconds, then I'll take a point and shoot. Last year uh, when I was in Naples, my friends took me to this hiking trail and I didn't wanna feel like a photographer on that day, but I knew that I was gonna go to a place that was epic and so I took a point and shoot uh, with me. I took the XF10 and that allowed me to interact with my friends to partake in the activity and at the same time document some memories in a way that suits my photography uh, aesthetics. So from a perspective of an outing, what kind of photography am I gonna be doing and how do I wanna feel? Documentarian or point and shoot tourist? partake in the activity type of thing. From the perspective of purchasing, it's the same thing. I ask myself, what kind of photography am I gonna be doing and how do I wanna feel and how much money do I have access to? So for example, the Ricoh GR3X, uh, for example, is a point and shoot that I would love to have. And that camera, even though I already have several point and shoots and even though I have a 27 millimeter 2.8, 40 millimeter full frame equivalent lens that I use on the X-E4. I don't have a 40 millimeter full frame equivalent that will give me a point and shoot experience. I have that combination for the documentarian experience, which I already know is the right tool for the right job. Um, but the Ricoh GR3 is a camera that I would definitely consider having because I think it would give me the kind of user experience that I'm missing right now, but I can't afford it. So step one is not there, which is why I don't have it. But fret not, my friends, <laughs> eventually I'll have it. Uh, step number four, this is probably the most important, at least for me, it's absolutely the most important. I make a choice and I commit to that choice for a minimum of three to six weeks. That choice, nine out of 10 times, it's, it's a stimulated decision by curiosity. So I'm always exploring uh, something. Your choice could be based off of logic or something else, whatever it is, but just making a choice and sticking to that choice. In my house, I use what I call the desk shelf method. On my shelf, I have all of my cameras and on my desk, I have one camera and one lens. And usually it's because I'm exploring some type of curiosity. And I'll explain what that means in a few seconds. But as I'm walking out the door, I grab whatever's on the desk, I open the door and I head out. So from the perspective of purchasing something, I'm gonna give you an example of pretty much how I use all four steps in conjunction when I purchase something new. So recently I purchased the uh, Seven Artisans 
18 millimeter 5.6 body cap lens. Now, I already have three different 18 millimeter lenses or 28 millimeter full frame equivalent lenses. Uh, so why would I get this one? And the answer is, I was curious about the user experience. I could afford it. I knew that it was the right tool for the right job because I've used the 28 millimeter full frame equivalent for quite some time. And the curiosity that I had was if I were to take that uh, small little uh, body cap lens and put it on my XC4, could I take a tool that I primarily use to satisfy my cravings for a documentarian user experience and then take that lens and put it on that same tool and make that same tool also satisfy my cravings for a point and shoot experience? In other words, I'd have a camera that I could both feel like a documentarian, but also feel like a point and shoot tourist type of thing. Could I achieve that? And so even though from a logical perspective, I was like, do I really need a fourth 28 millimeter full frame equivalent uh, lens? The answer was yes, because I was curious about it and I made a choice. I purchased it, put it on there. And to answer the question in the previous comment, do I miss the previous setup? I always miss the previous setups. Did I miss a 27 millimeter 2.8 lens? Yes, I did for like the first four or five hours of shooting with it. And then after that, it became super, super, super fun to shoot with. So anyways, this is how I choose a camera and a lens, both from the perspective of going out on an outing as well as from purchasing. And uh, yeah, if you guys have any comments or questions, please let me know in the comments. There were a lot of other things that I wanted to say, but it would just make the video really long. So let me know and I'll see you guys in the next one, okay? All right, guys, I hope you're well. Bye.